before the tournament started, to be completely honest, I didn't even remember there was a country called the Gambia. I know about the country, but I'm like, oh shoot, the Gambia is actually at the AFCON and they're making their debut right now. And I put my faith in this team by predicting them to get through this round of 16 tie. Did I predict them to make it out of the group? Nah, not at all. From what I could recall, I think I had them dead last in the group with Tunisia, Mauritania, and Mali. But Gambia came through the group conceding only once. And so far in the tournament, they have conceded only one goal. Which means that even though they have some very good attacking players, this team is built on defense. So you got to give it to their coach, Tom St. Fiat, for the great job he's been doing. And you got to give guys like Gain, Go, Coley at the back a lot of credit. But it is Musa Barrow, who is the heartbeat of this team, who scored the goal in the second half, brilliantly set up, good first touch, good finish to put it past Keita in, in the net. And Gambia held on for the victory. Even after they did go down to 10 men late in the match, where Guinea went down to 10 men as well, insignificant at the end of the day. But this team is built on a solid defensive setup. They let you have the ball. They let you have the ball. Like, Guinea started the game the brighter of the two teams, fashioning a few chances. Mohamed Bayo up top, you know, look bright. He's been having a great season with Clement Foot. But this team, Guinea, they missed Naby Keita. They missed Naby Keita. His goal threat, his ability to unlock defenses as well, they missed him. And he's probably ruined picking up that suspension for this game because Guinea are now out of the tournament. But this Gambian team is one that either Comoros or Cameroon can take lightly. And I'm going for, for Cameroon, the host, to move on in the clash between them and Comoros, where Comoros heavily depleted, and they don't even have a first-choice goalkeeper to actually play the match, which means an outfield player would be in goal. That's from what I heard yesterday. So let's see if that actually happens. And I think they'll be without their manager on the touchline as well. But we know Tunisia were without their manager on the touchline and they still went on to beat Nigeria. Strange things been happening in the tournament. So you never know what's going to happen in the Cameroon Comoros affair. But I think I think Cameroon should handle the Comoros, right? I, I do think so. But Ghana probably thought that they could handle Comoros. But I, I think Cameroon should be fine. So it might actually be Cameroon versus the Gambia here. You got to give it to them, man. You got to give it to them. They played well. They have played well so far. And as I said, it's their defense, man. One goal conceded, and that was against Mali. Four goals scored in four games. They don't score a lot of goals, but they have that attacking threat through Abli Jalo and both Musa and Modu Baro, who's been involved a lot lately. This team, a lot of quality. The red card by Yusufa NG, I don't think that'll be a big miss. He came off the bench, so he's just a fringe player, so they'll be fine. But they have to now look forward to the next round. You've done great in the group. You've done well in the round of 16 to get by Guinea. I did know. I did predict them to get by Guinea. I don't. I just don't think Guinea had enough. Even with Naby Keita, in my opinion, I think they would have get, got past Guinea. They just looked very, very good throughout the game. And I just love the ambitious, the ambitiousness of Musa Barrow. He, he just loves to take the opportunities when they present themselves. And he has a lot of quality, man. So he's having a great tournament. You never know. He could get a big move in the summer. So let's see how, you know, that one plays out. But Gambia, stand up. You've done well. So big up to all the Gambian fans watching this video right now. And you guys deserve it, man. A country that's completely surrounded by Senegal 
has a, a big river flowing through it and everything. Smallest nation on the continent of, of Africa, making their debut at the AFCON in 2022. And uh, they are repeating what Madagascar did at the 2019 event. And other countries have done well on their debut as well. But Madagascar comes to mind. I think Benin was actually a debutant back in 2019 as well, if I'm not mistaken. But don't quote me on that. I do know Madagascar for sure were brilliant at the 2019 Afghan that I did cover. So go back and check out some of those old videos. You'll enjoy that as well. But look, guys, I'm just coming home from work. I was watching a game while I was at work. It's a game that wasn't overly, overly exciting, but the, the it was tense. It was definitely tense. Guinea tried. I think Guinea, in terms of the final third, had more opportunities, but someone was always there to put in a block. Someone was always there to just break down the play, and the goalkeeper, Gay, was ever-present, and look at that late opportunity there for Guinea where the post was struck twice, first from a tight angle over on the left, and then a second ball was pushed onto the post by Gay. So he definitely deserves a lot of credit there. And then the third opportunity was put wide by Guinea. So they could just say they weren't clinical enough in the final third and the attackers let them down in the day. And it was just that one slip up in defense that really, really cost them. They did score a goal that was deemed offside, rightfully so, I have to say. And uh, even though they didn't play badly, they very unfortunate that they uh no longer in the tournament but look gambia i love this i love the underdog story i love that they are taking that dark horse tag and uh, they're wearing it boldly and proudly and uh, let's see what they do against cameroon I'm, I'm i'm saying cameroon but you never know man you never ever know you never know we saw what happened in the game between Tunisia and Nigeria where I honestly thought that Tunisia were too depleted to even compete and they went on to win the game. And uh, then that game Burkina Faso versus um, Gabon. I thought Gabon would have had it in them, took it all away with the penalties. Even when they went down to 10 men, that was a very exciting game. I think that's a game of the round of 16 so far, Gabon, Burkina Faso. So that game was full of entertainment. The Tunisia-Nigeria game only came to life, in my opinion, when Tunisia scored. And I was like, oh my God, whoa, what are we having here today? And this game was a cagey one. But nevertheless, Gambia did get the, the goal in the end and held on to the lead. You know what I'm saying? So guys, I've been very busy, been on the go. There's been a lot of information that I've been, you know, slipping me. Like when I spoke about Tunisia-Nigeria this morning... And I was like, who did who beat Tunisia in the group? It was Mali. And then I was like, God damn, I forgot to even mention the fact that Tunisia and Mali would meet each other in the World Cup qualifying game. And Tunisia would be out for revenge. So look for that one. That one would be a very, very big clash, man. Where Tunisia would fancy their chances against a Mali team who did beat them at this current Africa Cup of Nations. But let's see what's in store for Gambia in the future. Could they actually qualify for the World Cup in 2026? Because Africa is going to get a lot more places. I think they do have eight direct spots, if I'm not mistaken, and a chance for ninth. And don't quote me on that one right now, but I think Africa do get an increase. And teams like Gambia could be showcasing their talent on the big stage in no time. And plus, there's the chance that the World Cup could be held every two years and you could see Gambia at the World Cup as well. But guys, this is just my reaction and I want you to let me know yours in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks for showing the support during the Africa Cup of Nations as well, watching the videos. Appreciate it. And uh, from your boy Dom, thanks for watching. Six minutes away from the Cameroon Comoros game. I'm going to tune into that one. And until next time, peace out. Rich, school hut, peace.